Win Mastery students here who can watch the chat as well. I think I'm recording. Okay. And welcome to the Spring Equinox Gathering and celebration and ceremony. And it's about planting healthier seeds for new growth and sustainable presence. And we're going to talk about what that means a little bit as we go forward. And it's, it's a, I'm going to take out that lozenger. It's, it's a good sized crowd today. So uh, that's why we're doing it more webinar style. And I invite you all to come over to the Wind Clan afterwards and, and talk and share your experiences. But anyone who's ever studied with me in the Wind Clan knows that I usually talk about keeping an experience sacred. So if you have like a really compelling experience today, I, I invite you to sleep on it. Sleep on it for the night, a day or two, because sometimes what happens is when we go to plant seeds, we, you know, we spread, we spread them out before they even have a chance to germinate. And so that's, that's kind of what we're, we're, we're working on tonight is how to plant sturdier seeds. So one of those first things to do is to hold, hold the gift sacred. All right. Let's see. So what I've, I sent everybody a, a, a downloadable file and hopefully you've printed it. And if you haven't, you, you could have a couple of minutes now to print it or you could go back or just have a note paper or whatever. And the other thing I invite you to do is be somewhere quiet and know that this is a gift you're giving to yourself. So first of all, let's all give ourselves a pat on the back and thank ourselves for being here. Thank ourselves for knowing that ritual and ceremony is so important in our lives that we carve out out of our busy lives, our busy schedules, time to sit with others in community because there's that old song, when two or more gather, there's love. And, and, and that's really true that the more we come together as a powerful group, the, the stronger the vision, the stronger the energy, the stronger the gifts we can share out into the world because we're not standing there alone in a windstorm. And I'm going to open sacred space, but I'm gonna talk about the business part of it before I get to the opening the sacred space and, and tell you exactly kind of what we're gonna do here. And as always, I will do a journey towards the end of it. And then I have my assistant, Tyler, break out the journey so that you can revisit the journey. And so you can, you know, maybe you can't listen and other things are going on and you'll get some of it, but you can always go back and get to the journey later. So today, there's a couple of reasons that we do these on the, the equinoxes and the solstice. They're a gift that, that I happily bring to service to the world. The winds, I'm the servant of the winds and the winds want their message shared. And, and the actual winds are the, the, the element in nature that can take your seeds and take them and spread them and bring them further faster around the world or where, where community or however that is looking for you. And a lot of the Wind Mastery students who are here who've been doing this work with us for a, a while now understand that it's not something you do once and put down, but it's something that you, it's an integrated way of living. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So I'm, I'm gonna kind of combine some of the teaching in with some of the wind work philosophy because there's a lot of new people on this call who know very little about the wind work. And the kind of person I am is I always jump in thinking everyone should know all about the wind work and really, I was told this week on a wind walk to start all over at the beginning because I've gone so much deeper than I've ever gone before. And, and I learned so much more now. And so we're starting from scratch. So for those of you who have been here for a while, this is a refresher. Um, someone just raised their hand, but I'm asking you to put your questions in the chat because there's a couple of wind mastery students watching over that. So we're gonna talk about the inner awakening compass. We're gonna talk about cycles. We're gonna actually call upon a helping uh, 
wind spirit to help us with this ceremony and this work we're going to do today. And all day long, I wanted to to put, I wanted to pull it out and know what that was going to be. And I was told, no, it's going to be a surprise for you too. And so I haven't prepared what we're going to even say about this wind. We're going to talk about whether or not our beliefs are weather resistant. And you'll see a little bit why, uh, why in a little bit here. And then we're going to talk about the skills you need to plant an intention to grow corn. And when I was in Peru and I was blessed that the Alto Masayo, the, the top, one of the top healers, one of the top shamans in Peru actually blew my rites of passage into my, into my forehead one night. And so he always talked about if your, if your goals don't grow corn, then they're pretty well useless. And what does that mean? That means if they're not of service to the community, if they're not about expanding your, your reach into the world in a better positive way, then you might be time for some new goals. And I have some surprise offerings at the end of this, and I'm giving you a little sneak preview to see what it might include. So stick with me here and let's get going. I loved this multicolor wind of opening sacred space. And I opened sacred space outside before I started this, but we're gonna open sacred space together. Oh, thanks, Carrie. Somebody's already signed up and maybe you will win the prize. Uh, so we're gonna open up sacred space here and we're gonna start with the east wind. And the cardinal winds that we call on for the wind work are the same cardinal winds that have organized and structured humanity since, since before the written word. There's indications on caves, there's indications and things that they found all over the world that people navigated their world from their own wheelhouse, which means that your north and we had some people coming in from Australia who are going into the fall equinox. So north is only north in relationship to where you're standing in the world, where you're navigating what I like to call from your wheelhouse in, in, the, in the boat. And so when we're calling into the winds tonight, we're not calling in winds that have no relationship to you. We're calling in cardinal winds that can help you structure your life your world, your thinking, your emotions, your physicality, and your spirituality. So if there's wind whistlers out there or rattlers, feel free to join in. And we're going to just call to the four directions. We're going to call to the earth and we're going to invite Father Sky in. Uh, and the Father Sky that's out my window looks like gray storm clouds coming in. It, it's like, as soon as I've been moving through things this afternoon, the winds have kicked up. So we're going to begin with the east. And there's not going to be words. We're just going to call upon the wind the way that you call upon the wind, how it is sacred for you.
for those of you who are really new to this work, this is a wind whistle and it's being handcrafted for the wind clan by an anthropology student in outside of Mexico City. And so here on my website is the only place that you can get those. I wanted to talk about and I, the beginning point of things. And we're kind of, time as we know it is kind of a, a, a human made concept. Really, if we really want to understand our point of place and relationship, if you think about yourself that you're like a little grain of sand in a uh, mechanism that has about 4 billion years old, and right now in our, uh, in our life cycle, you know, civilization is kind of on the other side of being a mature tree, and we're really working with balancing how we, how we tenderly walk upon this planet as we go forward. In the wind work system, I get off the linear time because I think we're always gonna be self-defeated there if we stay with the linear time. But if we start to look at the cycle of everything in our life from the daily cycle to the weekly cycle to the spring cycle to your annual cycle, the spring equinox for me is the grandest holiday of all because that's when we, we, we put our seeds. That's when the seeds that we planted in the last cycle that's when the ones, the timing is right, they're gonna to start to sprout. They're going to start to grow. And, and you know, if it's your first time around the cycle, then maybe you're planting seeds for the first time. But my guess is that many of you have been around this life cycle in your own life cycle a number of times. And I've created whole charts talking about, for the business people about, how this idea of this linear time and space were a commodity. And in this, we become a responsible, you know, a responsible person in community, which is huge for me. Wait, where am I getting? Oh, sorry. And one of the things we, we have, why, oh, Sami just came in and is gonna make some noise. I tried to get her before, but she has her own agenda. One of the reasons that the wind work or the winds, oh, they're saying hi to you, Sami. One of the, re get up here. So one of the reasons this wind work has come to me now, and, and it could have come to you, but I was listening now in the planet is that the winds have really been quiet for about 10,000 years because we've gone through this whole cycle of where we moved from the, we moved from the country into the cities and all of a sudden we were praying indoors instead of outdoors. And so we've lost our way. We've lost our bearings. We've lost our connection to nature. And probably a lot of you sitting in this room, that doesn't necessarily apply to you because you're here, but some of you maybe have lost your bearings or you're seeing it in your children or your grandchildren. And so this wind work is, it's a family system for how do we reconnect to our nature? And then we, when we get to this idea of how do we reconnect to our nature, we realize that there is only nature, that there's no separation between nature and we're all totally connected. And it's really a sad day when we have to have billboards reminding people to discover the forest. And, and we know that. This, the winds are here to teach us that it is the way back to our salvation on this planet is the, the way to live in harmony there is like not another choice so if you're sitting here thinking well if i just took one more business mastermind i'd be there no it i'm saying take another wind walk we're in uh, uh, we're in a crazy time because we're there's an illusion right now that we're all connected through the world wide web and granted we are because 350 people from around the world could sign up for this webinar tonight but so many of us are sitting endless hours at our computers that this idea of this worldwide connection 
is, is not really sustainable. And one of the things that I've been really working on in the last couple of years is to how do we create community that really feels sustainable when we're all sitting in different places? And I got the greatest two messages on the WinClan wall, the actually the community U wall yesterday, and that somebody said that they've been a part of so many, many, many communities and they didn't feel the love and the genuine compassion and support we give each other, which is so encouraging for me that we can connect worldwide on the web and still feel connected to people. And one of the ways that we're doing that is we have two weekly check-in groups where people can actually, who are community U members, which you can join for free, check in with each other face to face on a zoom and everyone gets a chance to share and really talk about what's going on in their lives and as these groups grow we'll add more and what's even greater about them they're community you driven i'm i may or may not check in on these groups but the groups continue to go with or without me so let's get back to what we're doing tonight it's kind of it's that makes me smile. Somebody loves being part of the group. So we're, we're going back and forth because at the very end, we're going to have a shamanic journey, but we're going to get to that journey by looking at an actual wind work process. And what it is, is it's about aligning to your awakening compass. So what is your awakening compass? I was shown that our bodies are our actual compass, that the, the external compass you see, you know, the navigators using are actually fashioned that they're fashioned after the fact that we were already magnetically aligned to this planet, that animals, humans, we have natural innate navigational systems that again, you know, now we use Siri, we've kind of lost connection with, give me a turn by turn direction. Well, in order to get the turn by turn directions in the wind work process, you have to kind of disengage from that and go out and talk to trees and talk to rocks and, you know, actually take wind walks at night, which, by the way, is described in my book or is described on my website. You can go to the YouTube channel, lots of places you can find out about how to take a wind walk. And so it's, it's a simple process, not always easy, because we're used to, well, oh, well, the book says this no no the book doesn't say anything i go out and i ask the wind and let me tell you ever since i found the wind i no more gurus are needed because the wind tells me when i'm in integrity out of integrity if i'm feeling well if i haven't taken a walk if i'm tight if we really align to our nature we get all of the information we need and i heard my friend Lori today who's really aligned and she does these practices might be on the call and she was talking about how aligned she was today where she was thinking about getting a new place in June. There she is. She's thinking about getting a new apartment in June and she does her practices faithfully. She goes out today and sure enough, the first person she meets on the sidewalk is leaving their apartment on the very day that she needs an apartment. Now, trust me, you don't have to take a how to get a hundred thousand dollar mastermind to get an alignment with these practices still you may want to come over and learn a few of these practices but doesn't it work that way Lori? and she's been with me from the beginning she's been carrying around her sack of you know win cards since i was just getting this information so we want to talk about the seeds that we're planting so what i thought i would have you do because again we're going to journey at the end you're going to write down on your thing, what seeds are you ruminating about this year? Take a minute, if you have your paper, oh, the wind was weather, tab, if you have your paper, write down some of the things that 2018 would be successful if, you know, like if I could be self-sustaining, uh, oh, that's funny. It, kites don't fly when they're misaligned, Bridget said. And in Bridget's one of my assistants who does a weekly wind mastery uh, call, the community you call. And so go, just jump ahead and let's be quiet. For 2019, think that you're in fall, right? And at the, you're, we're at the fall harvest. What have you harvested for 2019? Think about it. Dream big. 
how will you know this was a successful year for you? I know I have my list that I jotted down. Put them in the uh, chat. Tell me some of the things you'd like that you would know that you had a successful year if. That's a good one. 100,000 K subscribers on her, new on her YouTube channel. If you haven't watched one of Lori's YouTube, she's very prolific and she always gets, you know, lots and lots of people liking her. Sandra and I, our YouTube channel has almost 4,000 subscribers. Uh, Bridget wants 2,000 people on her email list. It's peace within herself. Now that's a, that's a big job. And we're gonna talk about that one next. Some inner peace. We're working on that. All right. So one of the things, and you can keep writing them, abundance, financial love, self-love, to, to donate some weight back to the universe. I'd like that one too. So are the seeds that you're planting drought resistant? You know, can they withstand heavy winds? I thought I would share one of my, my um, pain pleasure kinds of experiences, something that I ran from. At 30 years old, I was a awesome chef. Like, I mean, I could have gone to France, dotted all my eyes. I could have, could have, would have, should have, but I was also a drug addict. Uh, and I also was pretty dysfunctional. I was sleeping, you know, I was in a darkened room three days a month. Uh, at one point, I, I checked into a, a, a lockdown facility, and I was running a brand new restaurant. So you see this picture here of me. Here I'm planting seeds, a, a, a farm-to-table restaurant, 10 years before ahead of its time. And so here's these seeds that I had to think about. it. I have a handful of talent. and But were my seeds drought-resistant? Well, the very next day after this picture was taken, uh, my, this is me and my father. I was 30 years old. I might have still been 29. I had this restaurant. He was there in my life for the first time ever. And I had the whole family there. And the very next day, he went home and had a massive stroke. Talk about testing out those seeds. So here, this is how this works in the wind mastery. So like I told you, you're gonna go around that cycle many times. So let's go back to my 30 year, cy 30 year old cycle. So here I had a new idea, a new beginning, a new belief about that I was gonna be a world-class chef cooking and having this great restaurant and my father, he showed up out of the woodwork for the first time in my life, helped with the financing of it and boom, he goes home and has a massive stroke the next day. This is how life, this is life on life's terms. This is where you get to see if you have sturdy seeds. You can't tell if you have sturdy seeds when it's a sunny day and you're sitting on the beach and everything's rosy. No, you get to test your seeds out when there's resistance. So in, in that resistance, there's always, there's always the opportunity. The resistance is the process to grow. If it was just smooth sailing, the wind wouldn't blow because the wind picks up one piece of sand and hits it off the ricochets it off the next sand, and it goes and it goes, and that's how we pick up speed. Um, I'm asking for questions to be answered in the a chat right at this point, okay? And so here I am in the beginning with the new beliefs. But one thing about the cycle, and if you can see it here, is that the new beginnings is always going to take you back to the south, to the, you're, remember, you're traveling from your own wheelhouse. So it's gonna take you back to your emotional south from where you are. So what is your unfinished business? What are your needs? So whenever, just get this, whenever you start something new, you're going to be tested with whatever is left to be done. And then once you can navigate that, you get to harvest something. You get to, do, you get to have some kind of a completion, but then it needs to go around to the north to see if you're gonna get a spiritual buy-in. 
if you're going to get community support. Now here I open this restaurant and I thought everyone's going to come. It's farm fresh food cooked to order. Well, in Syracuse, New York, nobody knew what this was. Nobody knew that, you know, cooking everything from stock on a six burner stove was better than eating a Subway sandwich from around the corner. And so I never got the community buy-in. I, I had the loss. I had all of these other things. And granted, did I make something from those wilted seeds? Did I find the few remaining seeds left from all of this? And I did. I did. I found a fire walk one night. And we're talking about here I am in Syracuse. I find a fire walk with a nun out in the middle of nowhere. And it started me on a spiritual journey that now is probably, you know, 32 years later that I'm still on. But one thing that I learned at that very first fire walk is where there's resistance, you will burn your feet. And so for me, the resistance came on a place in my body where my emotional wounding was showing up. It was like at the ball of my feet that had everything to do about my emotional immaturity. So your body is the tool. So all of you wrote down these ideas about seed you're planting. I want you now to make that statement. Uh, one that I can practice with is that uh, Lori says she's going to have 100,000 YouTube followers by December. So make that statement out loud, quietly, if your family's sitting there doing something else however is comfortable for you, say it out loud with your eyes closed and start to scan your body and see where there's resistance in your body for that goal. And you can feel free to share that in, in the chat box. It really is a quick exercise to see where you feeling resistance. So we have somebody in their head, their stomach, their heart. I, the other day I had a band across my chest when I was thinking I didn't have time to meditate. My back. So one the thing about once you know with your body, your body has all of the information you're going to ever need to, to share, to give you the information that you need to make the next indicated step. Again, sailors change with the wind. They're not trying to adjust their sail for the wind that's going to blow when they're halfway across the lake. No, they make the next indicated step. So there's a, a great feeling like, a, oh, so there's, a, a, so when I'm thinking just for no resistance is your dream big enough. If there's nowhere that you're feeling any resistance, ask yourself, is my dream big enough? Or is there something else that I really want to stretch to? Because I don't feel resistance about the things. I don't ever feel resistance about the book now that it's done. But ask me when I was there, I felt like that I was a fraud, that no one was going to believe. I mean, I had all of these kinds of things living in me all the time. Okay, that, all right, so we've got these resistances. So, oh, that's nice. So what we're gonna do, we're, is we're, this is where we get to call upon the wind spirit card. I don't know, do all of you know about the wind spirit cards? So when I started doing this research, uh, I found 150 wind gods and goddesses from around the world. And right now, 32 of them have made it into the wind bag, and it is bag, uh, and tried to make it a nice satchel, but no, 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 it's a wind bag. Uh, and they were the ones that I could find the most information on. And I'm sure as we get grow worldwide, you're going to be informing us of more winds. This is just the start. We just let the rock out in front of the cave and the winds have been released. I believe that this wind work is going to go long, long after after I do. 
you know, I knew something like this was going to come up today. So it's funny when I was talking about it, that whenever you have something that you start with a new belief or, and you guys can all laugh, that you, when you start to have a new belief or a new beginning or something that we're, you're going to get tossed into the South. And so sure enough, this was a brand new pack of cards. I've never opened them until today. We pulled the South card in a wind, which means that what we're going to be working on for all of our resistance in our body is our emotions, needs, and desires. So we're going to ask that place that's resistant in there, what emotional needs and desires will not be met if, or it's kind of like, what do I believe? Because it's kind of what, what do I, what do I believe that what won't my, what emotional needs and desires won't be met if I achieve my goals? So the one that I can work with is, is uh, the Bridget. She wants to have 200 people on her mailing list. And where were you holding that space, Bridget? Did she say in her throat? Um, I'm not sure where she was holding it, but wherever that she was holding, oh, her right arm. So what is, what need, or what need do you believe won't be fulfilled if you should get 200 people on your mailing list? And for all of those, can you relate to that? So the idea is what belief of, a, what do we believe will, what won't be, what need and desire do we believe won't be fulfilled if we should get our, that's a, it's a conundrum here, if we should get our uh, needs, if, if we should get our goal, okay? Wow, that's a, like a mouthful. Is everyone with me on that? Because it's interesting that we would pull a cardinal wind here. All right, I'm going to repeat the question one more time. And, and maybe somebody could write it in the box as I repeat it. So you wrote down something you wanted to plant this year, a goal that you were trying to make. All right, so that was your first question. You identified where it was of resistance in your body. Now we're looking at the, what is the old belief around this? And the wind we've invited in is that we have a belief that our needs and desires won't be met if this, if we reach our goal. Wow. That's, that's at the level of which we're working at. Well, okay. So if you're retired and you have no interest in starting a, a, a business or a blog, what would you like your retirement to look like? How would you want to be of service in your retirement? All right, so I'm going to call upon notice the south wind. And what I want you to do is to scan that place in your body where there was resistance, whether it was in your neck, whether it was in your right arm, whether it was in your stomach. I want you to go inside to that place. And we're going to... We're going to go into that. We're going to go into that place and look at what the what the resistance is. If we should get our goals met, what need won't be fulfilled if we get our goals met? Like the person with the retirement, maybe you won't feel retired anymore. You'll feel tired, You're, or you feel like the time you won't get the time that you were expecting. All right, we're calling to notice, and I'm going to blow to notice three times. So on that first one, really bring in, ground yourself into the earth. On the second one, we're going to call to notice to help us see what our belief is about what need won't be met if we achieve our goal. And on the third one, we're going to put ourselves in a protective bubble so we can move through this year and act as if. Feel yourself rooted because notice is going to start to blow your emotional things around here. What are those needs and desires and feelings that won't be met if you're successful 
and achieving your goal. And let's ask notice to blow that energy right out now. And so we could then put ourselves into a protective bubble where that we, we remove the resistance, that, that faulty idea about our needs not being met. Let it go, ladies and gentlemen. And one more time, we're gonna put ourselves in a sacred bubble so that we can be with a new belief. So hopefully you've mo removed a little bit of the resistance and that if you need to go back to this exercise, you can. And one of the things we're going to talk about um, is the, the quality of the seed you're going to plant in the next part of our exercise. Now, the quality of my seeds that I was planting back in that experience at my restaurant is that I had, I had a unbridled talent to cook. But emotionally, I was crippled. I was spending three days a, a month in bed with my cycles. Um, you know, my financial world was cut off because of my father. And so the seeds that I might have been planting might not have been the best ones in the crop. I, I might have been planting seeds that I want to be spiritual, but they might not have been the seeds that I needed to plant in order to keep my books in order. You know, so, so what are the seeds that I need to plant in order to be retirement and be um, more, more fulfilled? And, and you can sh keep sharing in there. And big, big energy, yeah, because sometimes if we have this big, big energy out in the world, it means, you know, maybe we can't run around and do all the other things we want to do that we have to focus. One of the things that I learned when writing the book was that it was the most focused intention ever that I ever spent in my life doing anything because I love to cook. I love to do all of these things. But when I sat down to do something focused, that required all of me. And so sometimes we have so many enjoyments and so many things we like to do that we can't plant the quality seeds that are in our hands. I want, when we go on this journey, what I, we're going to do is we're going to look and see if some of the rotting seeds you have should be left in the field to be buried over. Or if your seeds are too isolated, maybe you need a little bit of cross-pollination, some energetics from other people. You know, it's like the, the shaman's cave that I've come to do with Sandra. There's something bigger going on that's just not her and not me. There's a third energy that happens when two people with a great symbiosis are creating. So maybe your seeds are sitting in your teaspoon over here, but you really need the, tea, you know, the seeds that are over across the way. And so how do, we, how do we plant seeds in order to bring in the right people? One of the things that I love, like I said about the community university, is that we have a supportive community. Before we go to the journey, one of the things the wind spirits have told me is that this is the year that the wind mastery program needs to grow and go out further into the world. And so that requires me to put a sales pitch in the middle of this call before we actually move to our journey. And so I tried to time it well. Um, and so there's a wind mastery program that begins on April 2nd. And we worked with this kind of 
energy that's a little bit trickier to understand. Like I said, it's simple, but it's not always easy to navigate a wind, you know, but that's what we do together. And once you invite the wind spirits in, golly gee, they take over. They really do. They, they align me to where I need to be. I mean, look, if they got the book to Hay House, I couldn't have done that on my own best devices. You know, they, they continue to surprise and delight me with awards and things like that and wonderful people that I get to meet. So you can sign up there. I, I will send out links. Don't worry about that. The private group support. However, the first 10 people who register for the, call, for the course are going to get a wind workers toolkit. And if you already have one, you can save it and give it away to somebody else or talk to me maybe about a discount on the program, however that wants to work. And then um, if you register in the next 48 hours, you're gonna get a small group coaching session with me, which will be four to six people, depending on how many groups we have. The other thing that I was told to do before the spring equinox today was to plan the wind plan gathering, which is gonna be in Southern California in Lake Arrowhead on October 25th through the 27th. And it's called energy and inventory. And I always hated sitting in those shaman classes for 10, 12 hours a day. And that I'm the practical shaman. So we're actually going to do some fun adventures like uh, um, zip lining and doing a ropes course. And they're very intentional about bringing up the stuff that's going to have to be inventory that we can use the energy to remove it. And then bringing ourselves back to, Com community at the end by doing a ropes course to see how important you are, how the important link of the chain you are. So watch for more information and they have this great kitchen and the place is wonderful. So as I said a hundred times, it's simple, it's not easy. That's a reason you might wanna join the Wind Mastery Program. And this is the most selling I've ever done ever because one of my goals is, is I would like to have the wind mastery programs in my teaching be my full-time commitment by the end of this year. For those of you who don't know, in order to be of service to the winds, I've had to work two jobs, working for the winds and working for as a marketing and event planner. And it's time to change that this year. And I'm encouraging you to be part of this evolution, this growth. All right. Oh, I have to go backwards. So now the journey part. So you've got your, you've got your wind clearing and you saw what emotion was in your way. So I'm going to drum and we're going to do a sacred garden meditation where a journey where you're actually going to go in and plant the few seeds, not all your seeds, a I would say no more than three or four, uh, three or four seeds. Oh, somebody's asking a question about the membership. So I've priced it three ways. There's a, if you just don't know if you just want to be part of our group and you want to just try the five week program, there's one fee. If you're part of the community university, which has been my fun project this year, where I'm actually taking the last 10 years of classes that I've taught all of the telesummits that I've done, and I'm putting it into a community university library. And if you join and, and commit to the community university for a year, which is like, you know, a $44, a few Starbucks kind of commitment, you get to take the Win Mastery program too. And if you need individual coaching, there's a third level, which really is a Kickstarter uh, with me for five weeks. Every, every week you talk to me and and some of you are ready for that. Some of you might not be ready for that. So I've tried to make it so that it's something that fits us all. But are we ready to go on this journey? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And, and you can ask me questions about the program later because I really want to move into this journey part of this. So I don't really want to break the energy because... I feel those seeds are sprouting. Get yourself comfortable. And we're going to get ready to go. All right. So find 
find yourself somewhere comfortable in nature, one of your favorite places. And there's a path made with your new belief. We remove the resistance. And this pathway is built on your new structure heading towards your new goal. And up ahead, you see a walled garden. And it's locked, but you have the key. Take out the key. garden, look around. Start by looking at your feet. Look up to the sky. And look around your garden. What kind of shape is it in? Wander around the garden and start weeding out the parts that no longer serve you, the parts you don't want to carry into the year. Close it. 
it. We're going to walk back down the path, the path of our new beliefs. We're going to come back to the room. just make a couple of notes there. On your sheet if you have it to remind yourself. And I've invited um, Bridget in. Can you hear her, Bridget? Are you there? Hi. Hi. How was that for you? It was good. It was very interesting. Great. Um, yeah, thank you. Well, you know, I probably don't want you to share it. Right. Hmm. So somebody's had all their seeds blown from her hand. I can't read it all from here and dispersed in the garden. Well, that's nice. It'll be interesting to see if you get some wildflowers growing, some wild new ideas that you didn't even know. Um, so I'll, I'll read through all the webinar chat later. I invited Bridget in because Bridget joined the Windmaster group and she was actually my assistant over at um, Omega Institute last year. And this is a picture of us. We made wind flags and we'll probably be doing wind flags again up in, um, up in uh, Lake Arrowhead. So but I wanted her to tell you what, how her life has changed this year from doing the Wind Mastery program, if, she, in, if she's willing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's been so many changes. Um, you know, I think that the thing that came to me this evening while listening is it's something that we don't talk about enough in the Wind Clan, but it's one of the major components, which is integrity. And um, that when I first came into the wind, um, I found it very, very abrasive and annoying and, uh, it, it led me to you. And then what, what that abrasive, that abrasiveness is or was, was me being out of integrity. And so as much as I tried and as hard as I fought to stay out of integrity, <laughs> um, I, you know, the winds wouldn't have it. And so, you know, in, uh, a year's worth of time, I went into recovery for food addiction. Um, my relationship with my partner and myself and my family has completely shifted. Um, my interest in growing my business and being seen in the community um, near and far is also developing and growing. And, um, I, you know, the winds won't let me hide and neither will you, Renee. So. Uh -huh. I would say those are some of the more noteworthy uh, transitions that I've experienced. That's great. Um, thank you. So Absolutely. I figured because like with one person all of a sudden, like their income doubled. Oh yeah, she has a beautiful new haircut to show, you know, to, so she can't hide anymore. We like that. <laughs> thank you, Jeannie. So I just wanted to bring on somebody, um, I just wanted to bring on somebody who had actually embraced the winds because, you know, people say, oh, look, what are you teaching? Well, you can find all that out on the website at the Wind Mastery. Go to the practicalshaman.com. You can find out all of that. What I'm really teaching is how to walk in integrity in the wind. And the winds are going to keep blowing in your life. And we, 
it's not something I'm doing. I just happen to have a few skills and a few more years uh, studying with these winds. But the winds are are going to you. You get to have a direct revelation with the winds yourself, and then you get to have the group for support with a few trainings as we go. And basically, that's how it is. The spring class is really um, very. Uh, I love what happened in the spring last year because, you know, the winds guide me like that. I couldn't pull a card because if I had saw the south, I probably would have wanted to put it back into the into the bag. Because how do you explain? what you believe about what you think you feel. You know, I mean, it's, it's, that, it's, it's that kind of a conundrum. Like I said, oh, you want me to write a book about the wind? You know, it's kind of always been that thing. And Bridget, you know that, and everybody else has embraced it. However, it's still, it's coming. It is a way that you can walk in integrity and learn some skills and learn some healing and grow your own personal um, dimension of yourself as you go forward and i don't know i i was a seeker for from all the way back when you see that picture of me with the first fire walk i was seeking 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 then once i found the wind i no longer had to seek because i felt held i understood that wind was spirit from the get-go and and or wind was you know holy spirit ruach nirvana they're all wind. So somebody stole the wind from us as a way of having a direct revelation with spirit many centuries ago or thousands of years ago. And now we have access to this back. And, and the people who are helping with this are the people who are resonating with this wind work, who are coming on the call and then they're participating in the class. And we're learning through this together. Do I have a, a two more books inside that are, are closer to being written than not, yes. Still, I learn every week from Bridget's experience or Susan's experience or Liliana's experience or Carrie's experience because, or Lori's experience, because it's, it's, a, it's a system for living better when the world is telling you that we're falling apart the wind is telling me, no, we're coming back together. We've just lost our way of navigating with the wind. And the more and more people who can discover that you have a direct revelation with God through the wind or however you want to get there, it's fine. But using a few simple practices that aren't always easy, you can get there. And one thing that I, I, I'm going to invite everyone to is to really consider joining us for this wind mastery program or the community you program, which is my, it's just my heartfelt program to share all of that inform information. Uh, oh, I guess after the meditation, you can't hear me so well. Well, all right. Hopefully my assistant can boost that. Uh, thank you for coming Isabel and you know, go over and check it out on the website. I'll send a link. And please come over to the Wind Clan and share your journeys and share your experiences about what you planted. Because once you hold it sacred and those seeds are planted, you're going to start growing corn. And I'd rather you grow corn with a community that can support you through this not feeling good enough, not thinking your needs are going to be met, not really believing. Because trust me, once you set a new belief into action, the south wind will come up in your face and show you every place where you're not in integrity, every place where you're really not trusting, every place where you are living in fear. And, um, and, and that's all I have for you. And thank you so much for joining this spring equinox ceremony and, and celebration and sales pitch uh, for the Wind Mastery Program. And I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Thank you. And if anyone has any questions, I can hang around. I'll just stop the recording.